I'm known for getting elbowed in churches when we were at a wedding because I'm looking at the stained glass windows more than looking at the wedding. Looking at the quality of the workmanship, looking for mistakes, looking for repairs. Always got my eye out for it. I find them sometimes too. My name is Ray Cole. I'm the proprietor of Neff Chateau Company since 1981. Melvin Neff and a French Canadian by the name of John V. Chateau started the business. They met in Harrisburg, working for a stained glass studio out there, art glass studios that they're called back then. There wasn't any in Allentown, so there was a need for it. It was a growing city. A lot of churches being built, a church in almost every corner. They not only did stained glass, but they did murals for churches. They did homes, residences. A lot of the fancier houses and even the row homes in Allentown are stained glass made by us. When Melvin Neff died, Eugene moved the company here on Washington Street. In the early 1900s, the building was a stable. Then it was a mechanic's garage for a while. But in 1946, the Chateau moved in. I've been here ever since. After putting 15 years in working for Mr. Neff, I always dreamed that someday the business would become mine. When he got sick in 1980, he wasn't working, so I had the opportunity to run the business for a year on my own. It gave me the confidence that I could do it, so after we saw he wasn't going to get any better, we negotiated a price and I took over the business. This was a family business for the next, and it became a family business for me. My son, at a very early age, said he wanted to break stained glass, so I gave him the opportunity to make it. When I started hanging around this place, which probably would have been about eight years old or so, this was one of the first things that uh, Dad would have me do. Usually it was with a, a new window and it would be numbered. So all these pieces would have a pattern that corresponded to the number on the drawing. And so it was just a matter of having your piece of glass with the pattern, matching it up, finding it on the on the drawing and laying it out. He would give my sister and I a whole stack of glass and we would just uh, lay the window out for him. When you're doing a restoration like this, there's no number and pattern to cheat off of. We just do the rubbing. So now it's just merely finding the pieces that fit I enjoy creating things. I enjoy fixing things. You know, window comes in all busted up. Uh, doesn't look like much to be able to piece that thing back together and at the end of it end up with something that sometimes looks brand new and uh, you know beautiful again. I remember when Dad first started training me and teaching me how to do repairs. I remember the piece that he gave me to work on, I think the first time I ever did a repair, was something that I didn't think was very attractive. I just thought, oh, this is, you know, kind of ugly. Um, but I'll tell you, by the time I finished fixing it, I liked it. I liked the what you know, I liked that window. It, it, uh, it suddenly appeared much nicer than it had before. <laughs> I think the biggest challenge that I found running everything on my own is it's not the work the difficulty I have is all the other stuff that needs to take place in order to do the work you know answering the phone calls and going and looking at jobs and figuring out the estimates and uh, you know all that extra stuff and even something as simple as keeping the fire going uh, in the winter you know getting that started up in the morning and keeping it going during the day um, Every time you walk over there, throw a piece of wood on it, and you're taking time away from the table where you're working. 
Neff Chateau did a lot of work in the city, a lot of the row homes, the added transoms and door lights and side lights and things like that. So I'd like to think Neff Chateau had a, a hand to play in you know, adding to the beauty of the city and not everything being quite so plain. Some nice touches I think were added by Neff Chateau. People would come in here, or the builder would come in, say I'm building a row of homes. I'd like transoms in it, so we'd pick out transoms and bevel glass doors, and then we'd the workers would put them together and install them. Move on to the next job. I think the last I counted there was 409 churches or religious organizations we did windows for. One of the big jobs the original company had in 1904 was dub shirts down at 5th and Allen Street. We're made mostly of opalescent glass. That's glass with a white base. And then they had a fire and the windows were remade by his son Eugene. And they were more modern window, made up of painted glass instead of opalescent glass. They're still there today. I think it was very special that Eugene got to work on the windows that his father made. And I think it's special that we're still here to fix those same windows if they get broken again. We did a full restoration of most of the windows in this church in the late 90s over a course of about five years. The completion of the project was in conjunction with their 100th anniversary. All these windows were removed a window at a time, taken back to our shop, completely disassembled, and uh, repainted and restored to their current condition. These windows have uh, a lot of painted artwork in them. Uh, the inscriptions, which a lot of church windows do, but this also in the ventilator sections uh, has hand-painted work in the flowers. And then in the uh, background of the windows, all of that is stenciled paint uh, that we had to recreate because the old paint had faded and was almost gone in a lot of places. Uh, so we had to recreate that artwork uh, from an almost ghost image that was left on the glass. You could still see uh, remnants, but there was no more black left on it. All that got uh, completely restored and uh, brought it back to its current vibrance. I think now most of our stained glass work is Restoration work. A lot of people don't. We don't do a whole block of uh, homes anymore. One of the drawbacks would be the cost because this is all hand done and it's all very labor intensive. A lot of new construction, whether it be home or even churches, won't incorporate the lead and stained glass anymore because of the cost involved. We still do a pretty comprehensive job of supplying most needs in the glass industry. Uh, just do it as a one-man shop. I think there was always a, a love of stained glass by the person who owned it, whether it was Melvin Neff, Eugene Neff, or myself, and now my son's following my footsteps. You know, I always sort of knew that I would end up running this place someday, but never really thought about the, you know, mechanics of that. I'd like it to continue after me, so I don't know. I, I don't know what uh, what happens after me. Always like when someone stops in the shop and they get to show the, the jewels we have here. Stained glass has been called a, a lost art or a dying art. I wouldn't necessarily agree with that. There still is an appreciation for it. 
which I feel like seems to be actually growing again. There seems to be a bit of a rebirth to it right now. That's been doing a good job, excellent job since uh, I let go of the reins. Taught him well. I feel confident he'll be able to run the business after I'm gone. He's been doing a good job the last couple of years since I've been sidelined. I shouldn't forget my wife Judy. She's worked in the shop and out in the field doing the work just like us. Mostly dirty work. Went to a job one time talking to the man that contracted me and he said, I thought I saw a woman out here. I said, that's my wife. She said, where is she? So she's at the top of the scaffold. That's where the work is. Being second generation of the second family to have it, um, I don't know, I do feel a certain responsibility to keep this going. Um, I don't want to be the one responsible for it <laughs> fading away. Be nice if the business could, if there'd be someone else that Matt could find to work with him and teach the trade to somebody else. So that the business could go on for another 118 years. If you're ever walking around the city, just take a look at the row homes, see the stained glass, the transoms, the door lights. There's a lot more than you might think. The beautiful churches that are in the city. Stop in and see them. I feel Neff Chateau's history is also the city's history. I think most people are attracted to the beauty of the, the stained glass, especially when you have that light coming through it just right. There's enough of an appreciation for it. I think that it's going to survive for a good long while yet. Stained glass is always called the lost art. As long as there's people around doing it, it won't get lost. I hope we will be able to keep it here in the city. It's beautiful. I hope so too. Thank you.